G'day, g'day, g'day. It's uh, Danny Crouch here from Generation XY. Uh, Malcolm Painter, um, Generation Y, you're Generation X. I am Generation X, obviously the two different generations getting along and talking crap. And also when we put it together, we've got the XY chromosome. Mm, male yeah. chromosome, yeah. As we like to associate ourselves as. <laughs> yeah, loosely. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, you might notice we're a bit more up close and personal. Mm, we are. Changing things around again. And it wouldn't be the first time we're what? eight or nine episodes in and uh, this is a ninth yeah we keep changing the the, the format so we're going to give it another crack give it another crack see how we go yeah because we're getting all this feedback from nowhere so we don't know <laughs> what's working and what's not we're just overthinking it I think. Yeah, yeah yeah probably and these are all the ins and outs of putting together a podcast that uh, we're hoping that people will find interesting so the objective is just our age gap mm. you're exactly half my age exactly I'm 48 28 24 24, yeah. One born in the 90s, 90s, one born in the 70s, so yeah. there's a good age gap there, so hopefully people my age might relate to what I'm saying, and people kids my age your age yeah. might understand a bit better from their parents' perspective, mm. and then vice versa. Mm. Uh, I'd listen to us. Would you? Yeah, for sure. How many times have you listened back to our podcast? I don't, li- I don't like listening to myself speak. <laughs> yeah, there you go, so you wouldn't listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright mate, how's your last week been? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, up and down, you know. I think the objective is we did have segments mm. and um, it's based on strengths. So my strengths, your strengths, mine's number one's maximizer. But what's happened this week really has ground my maximizer to the end of the, of the world. I'm being self-employed in the business coaching and training industry. Uh, I've got a few clients and um, week before last, I decided to let one go. But against better judgment, I decided to hang on to them and then... They decided during the week that uh, we weren't compatible, which I thought was absolutely fascinating. And I didn't want to be there because it just the company didn't align with my values and mm. my beliefs and, and how I conduct business. And I guess I wear my heart on my sleeve and my body language tells people when I'm not too impressed with certain things. So they didn't like the way I was constantly looking to improve in certain areas, but they saw that as criticism and they weren't doing a good enough job and all that sort of stuff. So they helped me make the decision, but... Um, yeah, that's that's my week, I guess. I think that's a better a, a, a big reflection on them as a company as well, though. Yeah, you know what I mean. Look, look, everything's a a learning pattern, but I guess from a generation perspective, and I'm not going to say they were all your age, and you know there was quite a few of them my age, but I get the feeling in this day and age that there's not as much care and emphasis put on a workplace. It's more about money, and especially in your industry as well. Yeah, well, in the, in the vet sector, which is the education sector, and this is international students too, mm. so they pay 10 times as much as what us as Australians do to do a diploma or an advanced diploma or anything like that. And I just found it offensive, some of the stuff. Like, as an Australian who has done this course and marked some of these units thousands of times, they've got questions in their system that I couldn't even answer. Mm. I didn't even, you can't even equate Work, what the question is. So you're saying it was a bad question or they haven't done the well, work? Well, it wasn't a question. It wasn't a question. No. It was so, just a statement. Yeah, pretty much. Um, some of them were. And I struggled with it and I thought, wow, imagine someone who has English as a first language trying to interpret this, but these students are English as a second language. Mm. And there were two kids doing an advanced diploma that couldn't string two sentences together. And they're doing an advanced diploma in business or English? or Leadership and management. Which the irony is my unit being leadership and management <laughs> the company isn't very well led and managed <laughs> funny true story i was teaching them about vision and mission statements you know what they are for a business uh yeah i can sort of put one and one together yeah. but you're running mate we'll run through them so a vision statement is the be all to end all goal the yeah. number one thing the company wants to aim for and the mission statement is how you're going to get there mm. basically yeah and I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll show these guys. I'll jump on Google up on the big screen and show them how I'm doing. And I'll bring up the company that they're actually studying under. No vision statement, no mission statement. It was quite So you're teaching funny. them something that the actual company doesn't have itself. Yeah. Well, they might have them tucked away in the drawer in a, in a policies document. But well, Wouldn't that be the first thing that you'd want to advertise, though, if you're trying to get students Possibly. to come? You know what I mean? You'd, you'd, you'd want people to know what your values are as a business and how you're going to yeah. achieve them. You know what I mean? That'd be yeah. the first thing that you'd be... that you As a salesman, I mean, that's... Mm. That's every, that's every, that's everything. Yeah. And there aren't too many employees that do know what the company's vision and, and mission is. Mm. They've got a, a rough idea. And it's like, for example, say something like McDonald's, 
their vision and their mission isn't to make hamburgers. No, right? that's an experience. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, their vision might be to be the number one takeaway restaurant in the world mm. and the best. And their mission might be to deliver a loving, warm, happy experience for families at mealtime, mm. that sort of thing. Mm. And you've got processes that you follow to achieve that. So it, a mission might be you want to make sure that you help every customer that walks through the door. Simple way to do that. Every uh, person at the desk has to say, how may I help you? Mm. So it's ingrained into the way you treat and train yeah. people. Yeah. And obviously in my industry, I listen to a lot of people on podcasts and you know Simon Sinek that you've heard about and guys like that. And they talk about all these values that companies have. And I guess... I know, I don't think I remember when I was your age being, knowing about it. Um, it's just through my industry that I've learned about it. Do you know anything about vision and mission? And oh, I know if I would never do business with a company that I didn't that I if I wasn't aware of what their ethics were and what their values were and what their what they were at the heart, I wouldn't mm. do business with a company. Mm. You know what I mean? It's the driving force behind everything. If you don't know why you're going to get involved with the company, you just wouldn't do it. So to throw you under the bus, what's the company you work for? What's their vision statement and their mission statement? Well, it's an investment company. Mm. Yeah, so oh, customer care is huge. Mm. Making sure the clients value. There's and no happy. actual statement that's done. I don't understand what you mean. Well, a statement is a is a hard and fast statement that the company has, and they say this is our vision, right? And this is our mission. So normally so, for a short sentence that explains it in a nutshell. So if you're not quite aware of it, and again, I'm not trying to throw you under the bus. This can be a great opportunity mm. for you to provide something for the guys underneath you mm. and give them a bit of direction and belief in, in what they want to do. Are you talking about them as employees or the customer? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Anyone that works within a company should have an idea of what direction they're going. Well, it's like, it's, like, it's like any company. There is a hierarchy. You work your way up. You start as a marketer, then start as a salesman. Then I don't understand what you mean. No, okay. So again, and this is just off the top of my head, let's say McDonald's. Their vision is to be the cleanest number one mm-hmm. restaurant in the world. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's something that every employee on their induction day mm-hmm. will be told. Okay, and their mission is to clean every surface as possible, treat everyone as if they're a brand new customer, and you want to help them with every way you can. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that's ingrained in them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's the purpose of what they do. It doesn't matter about how good the chips are or how good the hamburger is. It is focusing on cleanliness. On the experience. And the Making experience. sure that people want to come in and come yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. And that just filters into how you cook the food and blah, 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 mm. blah. But again, I'm hypothesizing. I'm not saying that's what McDonald's vision or mission is. Well, for where I work, I mean, the salesman, we want to make sure that they become the best salesman possible. We provide everything like scripts, but training. it's not about the salespeople. It's about the customer. Well, you, as I said before, you're talking about the employees, you're talking about the customer. So, well, well you, you just use McDonald's as an example. So, you've yeah. got employees coming, and as you said, on day one induction day, they get told, this is an experience, you need to clean every service, make sure everything's clean yeah. as possible. Because the vision is to offer the customers the number one cleanest restaurant in the country. Or yeah, I see. Or yeah, okay. It's a little bit of a hard comparison, though, because we're not a fast food company. No. Yeah. But every but, company uh, yeah, should have... have a, some sort of a mission statement. Yeah. Yeah, or a business plan. Or, yeah. There is a business plan per se, and obviously, you know, we make sure that people are coming, they're hungry, they're driven, they want to make money. Yeah. So we provide everything. Well, we try. I, I'd like to I'd yeah. like to say that we provide... So everything. another one off the top of my head, um, the American Tennis Association or something like that. Right. Their vision was to become the number one tennis training organization in the world. Mm-hmm. Okay, just something simple like that. Mm. So the focus is on training. It's not necessarily about the tournaments and who wins the US Open and all that sort of stuff. It's about training and implementing training. So training the players that come through their system to be the best they can possibly mm. be. And the mission was how they were planning to get there. So it doesn't matter what industry it is, there needs to be a vision. vision so you're saying mission. that this company didn't have a vision at all? I'd say they would. You just, you didn't pick up on anything like that when you were Oh, there? you'd have to dig into it. And I'm not I'm not rubbishing the company. I'm, I wanted to talk more around how you see values in, in a business place and is it something that you've looked for in, in all the jobs you've had, not just the one you've got now. Yeah, it's hard. So, I mean, how would you describe, let's say for an investment company, for example, what sort of values, what sort of values would you like to see? Before you invested with a company, what, what would you like to see from a company? To be the most knowledgeable and open company. To Transparent. More. Transparency. Transparent. That yep. sort of stuff. Yeah. Yep. Customer service, transparency. Yeah. Yep. And I'd like, to say, I'd like to say that we are all of those things. Obviously. Really? Yeah. A hundred percent. Absolutely. 
Time out. What? So why don't you give your real name and phone number? Because it's a sales thing. It's a psychological <laughs> thing. I've never, I've never had my own name. It's like when I go but to. That's the op- not being transparent. Oh, yeah, but it's like when, yeah, but it's like when I go to the office, I'm Ben Moore. You know what I mean? I leave all the shit at the fucking door. If you have a bad day, whatever else, you just leave it all at the door. Mm. That's the way that I look at it. You don't have to. You, some people use it, but Jared uses his own name. Mm. Tegan used to use her own name. I've always used another name. Yeah, to me, I see transparency as honesty and open. Okay, and if you're pretending to be someone else, then you're not being your true self. So how can you deliver a service? I see where this is going. I see what you're saying. Yeah, I don't know where this is going either. No. Uh, I was just talking about more week than was. Yeah. But yeah, th- th- that's one thing that happened. I could talk about it for hours. Mm. I guess also... Uh, I don't like getting caught up on money, but obviously with COVID, business was quite tough. Yeah, well, I mean, and, well, you talk about values in business, and I'm not having to go at you here, but it was actually very, very good that you did get this job, and if, even if you didn't really respect the company or value what they were going for, you were still getting... What... It just shocks me that you'd say that. It, now that I think about it, yeah. So, it's, well, it's another, it's another fucking thing with generation gaps. Like, you guys get all really weird when it comes to how much money you make. Like, I don't have any problem saying that. Or even who you vote for. It's like you don't talk about it. Oh, I don't know about voting. I couldn't give a shit about voting. Well, I don't, not you in particular, but a lot mm. of people your age, you ask them who they vote for or how much money they make. It's like you're fucking asking them. No, but I've got other clients that I charge different amounts. I don't want someone listening to this and going, why the fuck are you charging that for them? <laughs> yeah, okay. And then charging yeah. that for someone else. Yeah, okay, no, I'm fair. Yeah, fair enough. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, yeah, I'm fair. Yeah, I understand that. Money. No. Yeah. Names? No. Drugs? No. no. What do you mean names? Business names? Personal names. Like client names. Friends or something like that. We've said Paulie's name before. You did? Yeah. Uh, why no personal names? Just in case they don't want to be notified. Ah, okay. Recognised or whatever. Yeah, okay. I mean, famous people that have got their own podcast and shit like that, if we're referring to something like that. But I wouldn't say your mother's name or your girlfriend's name or stuff like that. See, I wouldn't have a problem with that, but I wouldn't mind if someone did that for me, so maybe that's the reason why. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I just, I, I also look at the big picture that if, say, we end up getting a thousand people watching this, and they don't know who you and me are, and they don't like something they say, and then all of a sudden Nick starts getting DMs about how fucking stupid we are, and <coughs> yeah, okay, all that sort of that's shit. fair enough. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then they go through your Facebook, and they see Paul, and they go, oh, okay, that must be the Paul. I might fucking chase him or do something silly or god yeah. knows what okay yeah. uh, sorry mate I apologise hmm. and you're not charging the clients the business was paying you so it's it not doesn't like... matter okay. they don't know that okay. all they hear is a dollar figure alright alright I'm not angry I was just shocked <laughs> I couldn't believe it so yeah so to me that's not like a big deal or anything no yeah. well it is when you're self employed and you charge clients different amounts I apologise I was like I was like eight years old. I asked my grandpa who he voted for in the last election. Not that I knew anything about it. It was I was eight for fuck's sake, and it was like I'm not I'm not telling you that. What? <laughs> like it was like that stuck in my head for the last fifteen yeah. years. So there's a great opportunity for 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 teaching, mm. and it sounds like your grandfather wasn't in a situation to realise that you weren't able to comprehend that. Yeah, and rather than saying that, just saying look grandson that's not the sort of question you ask someone but it's almost like i mean I, I, there's a few people that are in his generation you ask them as i said who they voted for that it's like it's like it's like it's a it's really really rude and it's like you're asking for I'm that first thing it's about judgment what do you mean oh, well, ju- if, if you say you know i'm a libertarian or whatever they call mm. it, uh, then you might be judged as a liberal but you've got to be you're, you're on one side or the other just own it oh yeah. right, look i yeah. agree yeah. yeah when was the last time you voted have you ever voted? Oh, maybe when I was young. Yeah. And don't take that the wrong way. I still go and mark. Oh, my you, name you off still the list. still go mark your name off the list. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, you still do. I'm a way. strong advocate of if we live in a democracy, we have the right to choose whether or not to vote, and we're not given that freedom of choice. We are forced to vote, mm. and I want to see a country of voters who vote because they want to vote. I was that's re- when I'll vote. I was reading an article the other day and I might be, <coughs> I might be misquoting something here. I'm going to have to double check the facts and whatnot. But in New Zealand, it's not legal to vote. You don't have to turn up. Hmm. And percentage-wise, I believe that more people per capita vote in New Zealand than they do in Australia. Yeah. Because and look at a Prime Minister. She's brilliant. Mm, she's done a really good job. Because mm. they're voting the right people in. Yeah. 
Agreed. But if you want to go down that path, how good are the ads at the moment for the elections? I don't watch TV. Oh, that's just because you pointed it out a couple of weeks ago on the news or whatever about the solar panels. <laughs> it's like these guys, they just argue why the other team's wrong. Yeah, agreed. That's agreed. Just, and I that don't was hear this. Yeah, what I don't are you doing exactly. Tell me why you, we should be voted in. Don't tell me why the other people shouldn't be voted in. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I understand exactly why Trump got elected in America now. Because it's like everyone was just so fed up with the politicians and the mm-hmm. bureaucracy and whatnot. And then Trump came through and said, I'm going to make America great again. Yeah. What happened? Yeah. I, I, I don't know anything about policy in the States and stuff like that. But I thought him being voted in was the best thing that could have happened to yeah. America. Whatever was the consequence of that, that's fine. But I like the belief that if the Americans finally got off their ass to vote because they didn't like Trump, then it was a good thing. You know what I mean? Agreed. If you don't like what he did then you should have stopped him from getting in in the first place. Agreed, agreed, agreed. And, that, and that's why I always say, if if you want to have a voice to criticise a government or praise a government, you have to vote. You mm. can't... You can't. Mm. If you don't get off your ass and vote, you don't have a say in who gets in, elected, then you mm. can't sit on your fucking high horse and... Another thing I thought was really interesting going on the Trump thing, um, the whole criticism, and don't quote me on it, I'm just going mm. off hearsay and what I thought I heard and saw... But he, the criticism around him wanting to build a wall because he didn't want Mexicans to move into the country and all that sort of stuff. What I heard behind that was he didn't want the illegal immigrants that were criminals coming into the mm. country, which mm. is a very different, different thing to allowing legal migrants to come into the country. Yep. You know? So, yeah, if they're one of the biggest problems in California and whatnot are these whoever from over the borders coming in and selling drugs and murdering people, then why would you want them in the country? I agree. Oh, it's the same, like, it's the boat people. What, 10 years ago, Australia were getting so many migrants coming into the boats and whatnot and doing the same thing. What, murder and drugs and everything? Yeah, oh, murder, taking taking jobs and stealing shit because they, they just came on boats. I didn't. I don't think taking jobs is an issue. Depends on who you speak to, mate. True. You know what I mean? Mate, Perspective. Mate, uh, I don't know how you connect the dots, but... My stepson's partner's stepfather. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yep, yep. So I don't know what the link yeah. is. So it's your stepson's step, step, so stepson, stepfather-in-law. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Like yeah. 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 so he's got a, a business driving buses from mm. the Illawarra region up to the airport, and he can't find employees. He can't find people to drive a bus. Yeah, but who wants who wants to drive a bus on a Saturday? Doesn't matter. He gets the, what frustrates me. He hires a recruitment company. He goes to the job centres and all this sort of stuff. They send him these candidates. They turn up in thongs on a shorts and thongs on a shorts, thongs and shorts. <laughs> and he'll say, "What are you doing?" And he goes, oh, "I just need to turn up so I can get my money at the end of the week." So they're not interested in jobs. If you've got someone coming from another country who's been living on the street, can't mm. eat, and wants to take that job, go for it. On the other side of the coin, though, there are people out there actively looking for work just because you had one scenario it's not one i know it's not one and there yeah. are a lot of people out there that are dull budgers unfortunately but mm. there are a lot of people out there I don't, I, I'm, I don't know how they can say it's at three or four percent the unemployment rate it's just come down isn't it yeah somewhere in there i don't i don't understand it i didn't yeah neither do i and on top of that this is a fact there is something like two two and a half percent of the australian population that are unemployable through disability mental two percent it's a it's a, i thought it'd be higher than that employable yeah. So uh, they're, they're literally unemployable. Yeah. So you're talking things like high-level autism, yeah. Down syndrome, and I'm not causing offence yeah. here, Down syndrome. Mental health issues, all sorts of things. Mm. So when they come up with that number, that's not 3% of people that can work. So I just I don't believe the number. You may have noticed that the, it was cut out a little bit and then jumped. Mm. It's done on purpose, and this is another interesting topic. Um, yeah, actually, that's a good point. Yeah, Mal yeah. let slip. Money talk. So I made mention to what I may or may not be earning. Mm. I found it quite shocking that he would mention that on a podcast, but... I just doesn't mean anything to me. Yeah. So it's a lot of people your age, it's like a really, really offensive thing if you ask someone how much they earn or how much the house costs. Or one of my mates said the other day, he asked someone how much a, a motorbike costs. Mm. And his brother-in-law tapped him on the shoulder and said that was rude. Mm. What's rude about it? Yeah, I don't quite understand that one. No. You know, if you're interested in buying a bike yourself that's similar, it's like, well, what's it going to cost me? You yeah. Know, well, the, the, be, the best thing to do is to go and ask questions of people yeah. who have bought a bike or bought a house. Oh, if I was an employee and I had a salary, I, I probably wouldn't have too much concern telling friends, like close friends, 
what I earn. I, I wouldn't do it as a brag. No, it's not a it's not a brag, and it's like and you said it before. This is judgment. It's people worried about being judged. It's like um, when yeah. I brought up the analogy about asking a member of my family when I was like eight years old who we voted for in the last election. Mm. He said, "I'm not telling you that." So what's what's the big deal? Mm. Even if I was an like it's it's bad enough that I was eight years old. It's not like I was going to run away and do anything with that information. But if I was mm. an adult asking you who you voted for, doesn't that encourage progressive talk? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like if let's say for example I vote Labor and you vote Liberal. At least we can sit down and have a bit of a discussion about why I voted Labour, why you voted Liberal. Mm. And it's not about being wrong or right, it's not about being judged, it's about growing your thoughts and beliefs. So what I was going to say there is, I have no idea why someone would not want to mention it, but then even as you say that, Mm. it came to me as, what if I don't want to get into an argument with you as to why or why I don't want to talk about it? That's fine to say that. You know what I mean? That's fine. Yeah, and I'll respect that. Mm. But... If I'm sitting down and if I'm if I've put a lot of thought into it might not even be voting it could be something mm. else I put a lot of thought into a decision that I've made doesn't it make sense to go and talk to the opposition? But what happens if you don't have the confidence? Because for the last week everyone at work everyone when you've gone out to dinner and all that they bring up this conversation and they put you down for what you've said and you get this sort of wall up going no I'm just not going to talk about it. Well, anymore. you're talking to the wrong people. You're no, not ta- you're, you're not you're not talking to the right people who who grow healthy conversation. Do you know what I mean? Like, if people, if people are putting you down for the decisions that you've made... Do, do you recognise how judgmental that comment is? Yeah, I agree, but it's not... So how, you're, it's not, it's are you assuming that everyone should be good at conversation? No, I'm not assuming everyone should be good at conversation, mm-hmm. but if you're doing it for the right reasons, you should be looking for the right people to do it with. It's the whole reason why the Age of Enlightenment started and the, the Fourth Estate in France. People... I have no idea what you're talking about. People then. got together in pubs and things and whatnot and discussed ideas. They grew their own opinions. Meaning they were disgusted? No. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> But if you're going to grow your own belief point, you've got to have a discussion with the other side. Yeah, I... I'm not, I'm not saying I'm trying to turn you to my opinion. I'm not saying that you're trying to turn me to your opinion. That's not what we do. Exactly. We discuss these things. 100%. Yeah. So, my understanding is politics is a sore point for a lot of people. A lot of and people. And it can bring up heated arguments. Mm-hmm. And maybe that generation being my parents. Yeah. Baby uh, boomers. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that generation just didn't want to argue and thought it was just not a waste of time. So, hey, let's just, just make a unwritten rule that all. we don't talk about. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you and I are very confident in speaking. We wouldn't have a problem having a debate over something and talking about it. But a lot of people just don't want to go down that path. We've spoken about this before on the podcast. There's a difference between argument and discussion. Mm. And it's like a lot of people... I get, I get it's a, a natural part of human, this, uh, the human psyche that no one wants to be wrong, no one wants to feel like an idiot. But note I did mention the word debate. Exactly. Mm. It's very different to an argument. 100%. Mm. 100%. But I see it all the time on social media as well, which is my generation, obviously. But people descend into name-calling. Do you know what I mean? They, they might be you know, raising their point and you might be raising your point, and I said, you're wrong, you're a wanker. Mm. that's not solving anything mm. you know what I mean it's not mm. healthy conversation that's what I meant you're before. an idiot yeah believing that. exactly yeah. and that's that, and that's what I was saying before you're not you're not talking to the right people mm. if, if you've got people that are ignorant to other ideas mm. there's no point having the conversation in the first place mm. but if you raise a good point look if you can sway me to being a liberal voter and I'm a labour voter brilliant mm. I've, my values have changed for the, for the better mm. but a lot of people don't look at it that way well I think I mentioned this the other day to you I'll generally when I'm working from home I might have the TV on mute and just on channel 10 watching the news not the news program but you know those good morning Australia's or yeah, whatever they are. Was, yeah, yeah. and they have the the news on every 15 minutes and all that sort of stuff and I'll just turn the volume up and I remember I had to go out oh, a bit after 12 and that's when it flicks into this Dr. Phil guy it's the pseudo psychologist psychiatrist psychologist something like that well, anyway well, yeah. it was on crypto and I thought oh hang on I might just Spend five minutes listening to this. And same story. So he's interviewed probably two or three crypto fans in their late 20s, early 30s. And then the anti-crypto guy who was probably in his 60s. So it was, that was telling a story in itself. <laughs> but um, these these youngins, um, the crypto, pro-crypto, were very energetic and positive and suggesting how things work. And... This old bloke, great to have a, uh, an opinion, but it was like, you're a fool. You're a fool. You've did, got no idea what you're doing. Didn't he walk out and say, you're a fool. You're going to lose all your money. <laughs> yeah. You're a fool. 
So exactly what you're saying. He he went to name calling. Yeah. And belittling people because his beliefs meant more than someone else's. Uh, if they meant more, he'd sit down and have a discussion with them. Mm. At least an open and honest discussion. At least why why am I a fool? Mm. You're a fool. Mm. But why? Mm. You're an idiot. Mm. Like <laughs> it's just banging your head against a yeah. brick wall. And honestly, anyone who is sitting on the fence listening to a debate when there is positivity, friendliness and openness on one side, transparency, and then on the other side, you've got this bully who's calling names and all that. Regardless of what they're hearing, they're seeing the body language, they're picking up on the tone, they're more likely to lean towards the positive side. The genuine side. And they're not going to go, okay, here's my life savings, I'm going to go do it. But they might go, actually, I might do a little bit of research and look into this a bit more. It's like, um, to go off a little bit of a tangent, but the same thing with Martin Luther King, right? You had the Black Panthers who were all about uh, physical action and whatnot and taking you know their rights back by violence. And mm. then you had Martin Luther King who said, no, passive, right? If we act normal, if we act like humans, no matter how much... Um, torment and whatnot we go through, we still act the same, we still act the same. Eventually, people are going to look at the other side and say that they're monsters and we're right. There's a movie oh, I watched the other day. Damn good one. Not remember the times? No. A young African American girl witnessed a best friend being shot, didn't tell anyone, knew who it was, but then that came out at the end. What do you call it? Um, when you give the ending away to a movie. Oh, spoiler. <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> Generation gap. <laughs> Generation gap. <laughs> but the, the movie was based around, she was out and a cop shot this African-American kid. And the father, her father had been locked up. It was a drug area. It was a shooting area, murder area, all this sort of stuff. And the innuendo and the discussion around this whole... I think the movie starts out with the father and the young kids teaching them, if you get pulled over by the police, mm-hmm. put your hands mm-hmm. on the dashboard, mm-hmm. don't say a word, don't mm-hmm. move your hands, don't look down, all this sort of stuff. So this ingrained attitude. So you can take that both ways. But then as the story develops, it becomes about, are you a good... Well, I think the line was something around the father says, I haven't been a good black role model to you. And she turns around and goes, no, you haven't but you've been an awesome father Father. role model. So it's this whole dynamic of, do you make it about colour or or do you make it about about humanity and all this sort of stuff? And it was just, it was amazing. Talking about, still to go for a little bit of a tangent, I watched this video the other day and it was this... um, Should we start a maths podcast about tangents? (laughs) Because we've got plenty of them. Yeah, I know. Um, African-American woman, obviously a college student in in America, high school, uh, university student, um... They had a, uh, an African American speaker that came in and addressed. You. Oh yeah, yeah. On this, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and she gets up, and her first question to this African American guest speaker was, "Do you identify as being black?" Yeah. <laughs> what? I thought it was the the actual interviewer that asked. No, this the, no the, the no. It's not. It's, he's speaking in an auditorium. There's lots of right. other universities. Yeah, there's students. a similar one where the. But how ridiculous! Asked. How ridiculous is that going? Like, do you identify as being black? It... Doesn't he say no? No, he says yeah. He, he laughs. And mm. says, of course I do. Mm. But, and then she goes, well, you might not. Yeah, no, I can see that. I don't. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with being black. There's nothing wrong with being white. No, but why can't you just identify yourself as being human? Well, well yeah, that too. Yeah. But why would you ask a question in the first place? Do you identify as being black? What was she trying to get out of that? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. No. All right. All right, mate. So, uh, how's your week been? Yeah, uh, uneventful, mate. Just been working. Uh, we had a bit of a crap week at work. Like, oh. We had a bit of a, a challenging week at work last week, so mm. I've just been trying to get back up on top of things. So what's your normal normal hours? Oh, 9 till 4.30. Okay. Yeah. And how long have you been working? Uh, it depends if I've got phone calls to do after work. If I've got phone calls to do after work, I'll just go home and do them or stay at the office and mm. do them. Um, I've had a lot more this week because I've had to reschedule a lot of um, appointments that have mm. come over from last week because there was two long weekends in a row. So which question for you. Is your drive to work outside of those hours because you want to make money or because you want to do better for the company both. or something else? Both. Well, if I'm doing better for the company, it means I'm earning more money anyway. So mm. go hand in hand. Mm. But what comes first? What, values-wise? Mm. Money. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Money, for sure. Yeah? Yeah. All right. I, I might have asked you this before. Well, hang on. Well, sorry, mate, to cut you off. I don't... What do you mean what comes first? Because they are literally... They, they are the same thing. 
if, I, if I'm doing better for the company, I'm earning more money. If I'm earning more money, it's doing better for the company. But do, do you know you, what I mean? Do you want to make that sale to make your boss happy? Or do you want to make that sale so you can have more money in the bank at the end of the week? I want my life to be easy at work. Mm-hmm. So I guess the company comes first. So it's yeah, not no, a trick yeah, question. No, yeah, yeah, no, I, I know it's not a trick question. I'm thinking about it the more as, as you ask the question. My life is easier when my boss is happy with me. There you go. There you go. Yeah. And it just so happens that I, well, obviously I want to be earning more money as well, so it's definitely up there. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, my job's well, easier. Well, then my leading question to that would be, if they offered you double... Salary, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. But your boss was a pain in the ass. Yeah. Is it worth taking the pay rise? Or would you Oof. be comfortable sitting on what you've got and your boss is always happy? Um, a lot of what I do is commission-based, so that's a hard question to answer. But if I'm just going to... Um... Oh, fuck, that's a difficult question. Um, I'd... Obviously, I want to be earning more money, but I don't want to be working for a dickhead boss. Yeah, so, so double your commission and then they brought that guy over that we know from yeah, the other yeah, department to yeah. be your boss. Nah. Uh, nah, and I've actually told my boss as well. I said if they, if I ever have to work under him or even work with him again, I won't work for you. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I probably, I can't believe I'm saying that. I would probably stick with the salary and yeah. and have and have an easy boss. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, for sure. That's, mm. That was a great question. Mm. Yeah. So how about yourself? It depends on the time. Yeah, and that's why it was so top of the mind this week. Last week I was leaving because I just mm. could not stand working with those people. But the money swung me. And it wasn't just the money, it was the, the time that it filled a couple of days a week because of my client drop off over the last 12, 18 months. And you get quite, well, yourself, if you don't mind me saying, we can cut it out if not, but you're self employed as well. Mm. So a lot of the time, if you don't have work, you don't leave the house. Yeah. So it's to get out of the house, get your mind yeah. active. Work, yeah. Exactly. So there was the, the, the pros there and consistent money. So I've got other clients, but they're inconsistent. Mm. So I can't say, okay, I know what's gonna happen over the next month. It's it's like all over the place, mm. which I'm going back to, but there's other prongs in the fire. So hopefully those will pick prongs up. Prongs in the fire? Yeah. You mean irons in the... Whatever you wanna call them. Prongs, I've never heard that one, prongs in the fire. Okay. Yeah, right. Maybe that's an 80s thing. <laughs> Me and my mate at work were talking about the other day. It's weird when you hear someone your age go, let's fly. You've got a pot belly and grandchildren. Stop saying fly. Okay. Pretty fly for a white guy. Yeah. Uh, where was I going? So, mm. I'm going to ask you, and I think I might have asked you this before, whether it's been on the podcast. In the top five reasons why someone goes to work, mm. where do you think money sits? Second, isn't it? Fourth. It's fourth. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. And this has shifted massively from my generation to yours. And it's not just the money, but they've studied the millennials and they look at why they want to go to work. So it's being around being valued. Mm. The emphasis on they're making a difference by Mm -hmm. what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So if they're not feeling like they're appreciated by the company and they're they're doing something that's actually progressing them through whatever they're doing. So you mean like opportunity? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Opportunity to go higher. But even they can see their results. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if they're designated to a project they can see from start to finish how it's being told and even if they cannot see it they'll have a meeting where the manager will say this is where we're at this is how we've succeeded this is where we're not doing too well we're going to improve here blah 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 and for money to come in fourth when i sit down with clients and say ask them especially managers or bosses they will think money's up there at one or two Mm. so that leads to the next point one of these uh, Japanese students I was talking to on Thursday doing this advanced diploma, funnily enough, who can't write a paragraph, had to write 15,000 words worth of reports. But yeah, that's going to be successful. How, anyway. do you, how do you, sorry, sorry, sorry. How do you teach someone that can barely speak English? How, how, how do you go about doing that? Because obviously you've got, to, you've got to face adversity and challenges at work. Mm. How do you overcome that? Telling stories and, and using examples. But using very, very basic Basic. English. Yeah. That's why someone should not be doing an advanced diploma. I mean, you said before, I mean, we're not, we we don't shy away from a conversation or anything. We are Mm. pretty good talkers. That must feel very restraining because, you know, you you paint a picture with a language that you use and all that sort of blah, blah, blah. Mm. That's not very good. (laughs) Paint a picture with a language you use, blah, blah, blah. 
Um, but yeah, to, to, to use the most basic root words in the English vocabulary, mm. it must be very restricting. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you can't use idioms, you can't use metaphors, analogies. And I guarantee you didn't understand ninety percent of what I said. And that's what I mean. The, going back to and don't want to harp on it, but the vision and mission statements that's yeah. something you should learn at Cert three certificate three level. Yeah. So you got Cert three, Cert four, diploma, advanced diploma. Yeah. This bloke should have known it all. Anyway, Shit. off topic. Going yeah. back yeah. to what I was talking about. We started having this conversation about um, where money ranks and what people value, and he started talking about Japan and, and what happens there. And they value promotion, mm-hmm. so that's their end goal. And he made an interesting point. The jobs that he's had here, there's a, a lot of focus on the staff and making sure the staff understand. So he works as a kitchen hand or whatever, the chef, the head chef, will talk to him and help train him and all this and stuff. Where in Japan, no one can talk to the head chef. You talk to the sui, sui, sous chef, sous chef, and they train the staff. And, and the sous chef's the only one allowed to talk to the head chef. And Fair dinkum. And people go to work and they're not taught to look after the customer. Sorry, other way around. The whole emphasis is on the customer, not the employee. So the employees are treated like absolute crap and just told exactly what they have to do. So uh, promotion is higher on their list and money. And the other three, being valued, getting along with, fr- um, having friends in the workplace. How does promotion and money not mean the exact same thing? It's prestige. So you can so move up the ranks but not get a pay rise. So it's more about the, um, the title. Mm. Right, okay. Oh, I may have said this story before. There was this time in England, when I was over there, you would have been out five. <laughs> 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 I, I caught up with a uh, Kiwi yeah. who I went traveling through Egypt with and um, he was a plumber you know, in England doing quite all right for himself and what I found fascinating well I didn't know this at the stage but the English are very prestigious about titles and he goes watch this we're in the pub and saw two lovely little ladies over there obviously English he goes watch this and comes and saddles next to him and goes hi how you doing blah 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 Within about 30 seconds, one of them turns around and goes, oh, so what do you do? And he goes, oh, I'm a plumber. And she just turned it back to him. It's because, because he doesn't wear a tie. <laughs> and he goes, almost at the top of his voice, very clearly, he's still sitting next to her, he goes, this is what I mean. She wants someone who works in a... In a... We've got a plumber in the room with us as we speak. <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> but hang on. He goes, this is what I mean. These English birds... They want someone who works in an office wearing a tie earning 15 grand a year. White collar. Where I'm earning five or six times that and they don't want to talk to me. Yeah, that's ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> that's stupid. Titles. I haven't been back since. I don't know if it's changed. Sorry to all you English poms that are listening, but... Uh, we had two listeners up. last week. Two listeners. Oh, but didn't you say we had two? Oh, no. We had... Oh, I don't know. Two last downloads week, or something? Um, no, we couldn't have them last week because uh, someone was meant to do the editing about two or three weeks yeah, no, ago I was, I for st- the first time, and I still don't think it's finished. I started doing it this morning, and I yeah. grossly underestimated how much time it mm. takes. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I I watched it. I've got all the timestamps in that book, and I'm just, oh, fuck, this is going, going to take a while. Yeah. yeah. I'll do it this afternoon. Yeah, leave it to the last minute, even though the last minute was two weeks ago. We should have uploaded it two weeks ago, so we'd be on the Fortnite chain. But, but now it looks like these two... So actually, if you're watching this and you have, you've missed an episode, it's probably because it hasn't been edited yet or uploaded. I'll upload and edit this one before he uploads the last one from three weeks ago. I don't even know how to upload it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm meant to be the Generation gap. Generation gap. Are you kidding? Yeah, you got me before. Oh, I got you before. You got me now. All right, fair enough. I got you before you got me. No, I got you before. With the gen- You didn't even know what a spoiler was. Yes, I did. I just couldn't remember the name. Ah, uh, no. No, no. I'm not buying that for a second. Okay. So every time you can't remember something, it means you don't know it. Yep. Okay, cool. What's your name? Oh, you idiot. You don't even know your name. <laughs> Too slow. All right, let's do the maximizer. Time for Mad Maximizer. That's the intro. Is it? Yeah. Okay. We'll see. We'll see how it compares. <laughs> Uh, so this leads in from yeah what happened during the week with the, the training organisation. To all you trainers out there in the vet space and the uh, secondary space, or no, tertiary space, that isn't actually, actually, no, it goes with university as well. There is too much compliance 
and rubbish that goes along with this position. The students aren't getting educated. I think from last memory, it's somewhere around 17% of students online worldwide, and it's close to the same in Australia, finish their courses online. So it's not working. It is not working. 17%? Mm. What, is this a bachelor degree over three years? No, any degree. Any degree? Any online course, it's around 17%, 16, 17%. Well, it's not working. No. Fix it. No. And how, how, how can they go about fixing it? Stuff the compliance. You've got these white-collar idiots in offices. Bureaucracy. Bureaucracy making trainers and training organisations jump through hoops and they're not getting the opportunity to train students because... 60, 70% of the time is focused on this compliance rubbish. Mm. And then you've got training organisations that aren't even compliant and they're taking tens of thousands of dollars off students. Um, I can guarantee you for a fact that this client, and I will never name them, they are happy just taking the 20 grand for a student doing a diploma knowing full well they're not going to finish the course because they just want their visa to stay in the country. A bloke from India told me um, about a year and a half ago now, I believe that tertiary education is the second highest or third highest contributor to the Australian economy. Yeah. And it's and they pay, full. as you said, they say like 10, 10 times more than what you would in Australia. Mm. Mm, that's, that's rubbish. 17%. It's an absolute disgrace. Mm. And on the other hand, I've got another client and she's an angel and everything is above board. And... Um, and I'll admit it here, I started to become too lenient with her students because of what was going on in the other training organisation. <coughs> Is it the one you do the marking for? Yep. Can I say that? I don't know. Well, I prefer if you didn't, but yes, Well, that's what, I, that's what I'm like walking on eggshells now because <laughs> I don't know what I can and can't say. Well, do you notice how I really don't talk about what you do? You can do. I don't care. Mm. That's what I'm saying. Like, I, yeah, I, I'm, I'm just saying, do you notice how I don't... Yeah, okay. go into explicit yeah. details. So don't go into explicit. If details. you choose to go into explicit details, that's great. But the whole point about the podcast is because we just sit down at the pub and have these conversations, mm. and we just ask questions. Yeah, you know what I mean. So we, now, now that I, I have tell to, um, you as a personal friend, I don't tell an audience of strangers. Now that we have to censor certain things, I don't know what we should censor and what we shouldn't mm. censor. So I'm still getting a feel. You for are it. more than ha- you are more than welcome to be open and honest about anything you want to discuss. But I can't. But ask. don't necessarily talk on my behalf of what I do and. I didn't. I asked a question. Is that the one you're marking for? But don't. Yeah. Okay. Right. right. Sorry. Sorry, mate. Yeah. It's I'm, okay. I'm, I'm still learning. It's yeah. borderline. I'm. I, I refrained from asking a couple of questions before because I wasn't sure if I. And that's why I said I mm. said I don't know if I can say this. But mm. okay. Cool. All right. Sweet. No worries. No. I, yeah. It's it's not a massive deal, but I don't. I know that if we don't set boundaries, things start to relax, and then things start coming out, and all that sort of stuff, and mm. we get lazy, and yeah, okay. I just yeah, like no, 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 that's, setting parameters. Yeah, hundred well. percent. You could have parameters. Yeah, okay, no, no, it's all right. Mate. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know how they change it. I don't know how they they fix it. Well, I mean, you've been in the industry for twenty years now. Surely you have got some sort of idea. Yeah. What is it? Focus on the students, as so, opposed to the. The ticket, as opposed to ticket boxes. Yeah, and that's what it is. It's ticking boxes. Mm. Yeah. And just for the just for the payday as well. Right. And to tell you the honest, and I hate the industry and I hate having to go back there, but because clients dry up, I need to fall back on qualifications that I've had for a long time. Mm. The pay rate has not gone up in seven or eight years. That's another conversation in itself, yeah. mate. That's all over the news. Because and I'll tell you why. Because the training organisations cannot afford to pay trainers because they've got to pay pay so much to IT compliance, all this other rubbish. Mm. Okay. The, the job is train students, but that is maybe twenty percent of the business. Mm. Nice one, mate. That's Max. Mad Max. Maximizer. Surely Mad Max isn't trademarked. I don't know. Yeah, anyway, Mal knows boats. All right, that's Mad Maximizer in a nutshell. What have we got next? Mal knows boats. Uh, do you? I do know boats. I know dinghies. <laughs> start this one off it's gonna to have to be a little bit sad oh Chris <laughs> did you do that for effect yeah brilliant did it work <laughs> I don't know did it work did you have effect in uh, my generation <laughs> Cristiano Ronaldo right football player I know you yeah. don't like soccer but I found this really really touching and it's sort of he can kick with both feet yeah I'm pretty sure I'm sure he probably no. could so yeah, no, I know it's a cliche but it sort of restored my um, faith in humanity he recently, um, his well, he didn't. His wife recently gave birth to twins. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, one of them was a stillbirth. Mm. Right now, he plays for a little club called Manchester United. Mm. Yeah, I think I've heard of them. Their biggest rivals are Liverpool. 
mm-hmm. and they absolutely hate each other, hate each, despise each other. It's probably one of the biggest rivalries in sport, right? Mm-hmm. And you guys probably know this, but Dan doesn't really follow football. So Cristiano Ronaldo is famous for wearing the number seven on his jersey, much like Michael Jordan with 24. On the side, when Liverpool played Manchester United, it was about three or four days after Ronaldo's um, wife gave birth to a stillbirth. Um, on the seventh minute of the game, the whole crowd mm. got up on their feet. And this is at Anfield and Liverpool. Liverpool mm. home fans got up on their feet and applauded Cristiano Ronaldo for a whole minute. Yeah, I heard about that. That was beautiful. Good stuff. That was absolutely amazing. Yeah. So... Sad, very sad news that it obviously he's still birth. No one wants to go through that. But the fact that Liverpool actually got up and paid their respects to him was mm. absolutely phenomenal. I would never have, especially when you got the English ho- uh, ho- what, hooliganism, mm. blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that was brilliant. That was yeah, respect where respect's due. 100%. I'll tell you what would be an interesting conversation is in about 18 years talking to the other twin. And understanding whether or not they have something missing. They, they can sense something's missing. There's apparently mm. there's this massive bond twin between complex. twins. Yeah, yeah. And no, mm. I have I've, my mum. Yeah, I, I know a twin, and she she said that when they were kids, there were some sort. Of, I I don't know if I believe it, but it just can't be explained with science, can it? Mm. So I'm going to finish with a story based on twins. Go on. And I think I've told you. And it's it's, it's about Mark and Steve. No, it's an analogy that uh, quite a few motivational speakers talk, and whether it's true or not, not 100 percent sure. But down in the deep south in, in the States, their mother and father gave, well, the mother gave birth to twins, obviously. Now, the father was a bit of a rogue. He was in and out of jail, beat his wife, alcoholic, just a real thug. Dropkick. When they were about three or four, um, he ended up killing the mother. Shit. Turning it on himself and killing himself. And this is, God knows when, maybe the 60s or something, when adoption and all that sort of stuff was a bit rife and orphanages. Anyway, the, the, the two twins got separated. One ended up on the East Coast, one ended up on the West Coast. And somehow the media caught up with them like a current affair or 60 Minutes or something like that. Now, they managed to interview them completely separate, ask them all the same questions. But the mo- And what happened, the one on the West Coast became a very successful lawyer uh, married once, three kids, nice house, car, ideal sort of life you hear. The one on the East Coast sort of followed in his father's footsteps. In and out of jail, drug addict, alcoholic, beat his wife, married two or three times, had kids with all different parent uh, mothers and all this sort of stuff. And the exact same question got the, the last question that the interviewer asked, the exact same question got the exact same answer. And the question was... Why did you end up like this? And they both said, how do you think I'd end up with... How do you think I'd end up having a father like I did? Mm. Mm. That's very true. Yeah, it's very true. Think about that one. That's deep. Anyway, we would love to hear from someone, please, because we want some (laughs) feedback. (laughs) And uh, we want some questions or some ideas around how we can uh, make people interested into the generation gap. Mm. Because... it doesn't matter who you are, I guarantee you you're involved in a generation gap. We're running a bit dry, aren't we? Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, we're showing progress. So if you're listening to this and we're up to the 100th episode, you're probably loving it and you've come back to listen to this one and you're going, oh my God, I can't believe they started out this way. They've just come to see my face. That's where we are. But yeah, I can. at this day and age, there is still email. I don't know if you, you know, might be listening to this in 20 years' time and there's no such thing as email. I've got email, I never use it. Yeah. No wonder you don't respond. Anyway. <laughs> Emails their friends. <laughs> you, I thought you said you emailed yourself. I'll send you a postcard. What are you doing today? You get it a week later. Oh I heard that God. you set up two email accounts so you could email yourself. <laughs> no, I had to set up another one. But anyway, so much from anyone from my generation, if you want to email us some informational questions or, I don't know, something silly or funny, I've set up a YouTube channel and an email based through my business. So if you don't quite understand it, it's called Choose Your Chapter. But the email is genxy, as it sounds, G-E-N-X-Y, at chooseyourchapter.com.au. And the YouTube channel is Choose Your Chapter. So if you are watching this on YouTube, please subscribe and you'll get instant notification of when our next episode is. Mm. Uh, Or if you're on the podcast, keep following what else have we got? Uh, TikTok, TikTok and Instagram. So when I well when I get around to editing this um, 
previous week or two weeks ago episode. <laughs> so, sorry to interrupt. <laughs> so I listened to the Hamish and Andy podcast. If you haven't listened to that before, very funny. But they've got a bit of a, uh, a segment sort of thing that it takes ages to upload um, questions or videos to their website or their, wherever they send them to. And um, they get people calling in and there's like, they're pretending like they're from the 1850s and they say, oh, you know, I hope you, you've heard this by now. It's uploading, blah, blah, blah. So there's a fair chance when you're watching the last episode, it might be 2050. People could be watching this when we're dead. Very true. And if you don't edit that film, it's going to be very quick. <laughs> um, we've also got an Instagram and TikTok. Jen underscore XY underscore. That's Jen underscore XY underscore. So I type that in. You wouldn't know what Instagram or TikTok was, would you? Yeah, I absolutely do. I had accounts before you were born. Lovely speaking to you again, Danny. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Signing off. Yeah, I'm Danny Crouch from Gen XY. No, you're Danny Crouch from Generation X. And I'm Malcolm Painter from Generation Y. Yes, but I'm still Danny Crouch from Generation XY. On the podcast, yes, yeah, so am I. Malcolm Painter. Yeah. Signing off. Listening. That's what our generation have been brought up to do. Learn yeah, from it. It is like that, yeah. Life it out.